Hey everyone, Matt Botas here with Heli Direct. Today we're going to talk about crashing and your helicopters, what it does to them, what you can do to fix them. Um, so typically in a crash, you are going to bend either a main shaft, a head axle, a tail output shaft. Uh, sometimes you'll even bend the clutch shaft. So let's talk about what you need. You need a magnetic base. And you get this all from Harbor Freight online probably. You need a indicator, either plunger or lever style, with graduations of uh, one thousandth of an inch. And you need a vise. This is a fairly cheap craftsman vise. Nothing special. So here we have an old N5 shaft that I never dial indicated. I always wondered whether it was bent or not and never had the time. I was probably at a fun flight, didn't have the time to check it or not. Maybe it was wobbling after I crashed it. Who knows? Today we're gonna test it out. All right, we've got it all set up. So basically your, your plunger style is right on the tip over here. You're in contact with the main shaft. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of pressure on it because the plunger is engaged with the shaft. All right, and all you're gonna do you're gonna roll the shaft while looking at the gauge. Okay, and you can see this one is out by one, two, three, four, five, six, six thousandths. So I'm gonna keep rolling it, it goes back. Okay, this one is garbage. All right, here we have a Synergy 766 10 millimeter head axle. And this one was in question as well. Let's see what we got here. See, I'm rolling it in the V blocks. And it is good. We are not moving at all. Now, here we have a tail output shaft. Now, the tail output shaft is a little bit more critical because these things are spinning upwards of 10,000, sometimes up to 12,000 RPM. So you really want a tail output shaft to be as true as possible. Let's see where we are on this one. I am not getting any movement on that at all. Okay, and here we have a 516 head axle. Don't know the status of it. Slap it on the V-blocks. Put the dial indicator on there, twist it around, and we are, are we moving. We are not moving. That one is good. Let's talk a little bit about tolerances for these shafts. Okay, this one here is a tail output shaft. Again, running probably 10,000, 12,000 RPM. You do not want any run out in this, if possible. So that dial indicator, if you're using a one thou dial indicator, you do not want to see that dial move at all. Uh, these are head axles. Uh, you could get away with a little bit. Obviously you want it to, to not move at all, but you know, if you have one thou or two thou out, you probably won't see any problems. Uh, a little bit further out, maybe four or five thousand out, you're going to start to see the head or, or the main blades not track. They'll come in track and then they'll go out of track. Uh, you're not going to be able to track your head with a bent head axle. Uh, the main shaft itself, uh, you're probably only spinning, uh, I don't know, 700 class around 2000, 2200, uh, maybe 2300 if you're a little crazy. Uh, but this guy right here, obviously again, you don't want any run out at all, but if you had to run one in a pinch, I would probably run one that's maybe one or two thousandths out and then change it when you can. And last but not least, the clutch stack shaft or the clutch start shaft. That guy, uh, this style right here, the shaft is actually pressed into the clutch. Your nitro motor is going to spin somewhere between 16, maybe 17,000 RPM. Uh, maybe even 18, the smaller engine, uh, you do not want that thing bent at all. That's going to be super critical to vibration 
a vibration-free helicopter. Any vibration that intense is gonna cause all kinds of problems. So there you have it, folks. Test out your shafts, figure out whether they're bent or not. If they are bent, replace them. This will solve vibration problems, head wobbles, all kinds of problems. So test out your shafts. Sometimes even if they're brand new in the package, if you see your helicopter wobbling, uh, test them out. 